Well, the devil's in the phone booth. Not a 911. Well, the church is on their knees and they're holding up the spiritual gun. Well, the devil thought he had it, but the tables have turned. Now he's on the run. The devil's in the phone booth. Not a 911. My whole life has changed since the Lord saved me. Now I proclaim the mighty name of Jesus Christ to everyone that I see. You know the keys to the kingdom are the secret to success. To loose the Holy Ghost and the Son, the devil's in the phone booth. Down to 911. Well, the devil's in the phone booth. Down to 911. Well, the church is on their knees and they're holding up the spiritual gun. Well, the devil thought he had his, but the tables have turned. And now he's on the run. The devil's in the phone booth. Down to 911. What in hell do you want? There's nothing there for me. Jesus saved me, sanctify me, now the Holy Ghost is setting me free. From the things of the world that, that were looking pretty good, the devil lied and said they were fun. The devil's in the phone booth, down to 911. Well, the devil's in the phone booth, down to 911. Well, the church is on their knees and they're holding up the spiritual gun. Well, the devil thought he had us, but the tables have turned. And now he's on the run. The devil's in the phone booth. Down to 911. Well, the devil's in the phone booth. Down to 911. Amen. Amen. The devil is in the phone booth, dialing 111. 911, I'm sorry. Hope y'all have had a great weekend. We've had a pretty busy weekend ourselves. But I, I, I just learned that new song. I've, I've known the song, but I wanted to learn it to sing it tonight. As you know, well, you may not know, but we are actually live tonight. It feels like it's been forever, but it's good to be back live. Uh, we love you. I appreciate all that's going to be tuning in. We've got a couple more songs we're going to sing. But uh, the next song we're going to sing is Old Ship of Zion. I haven't done this song in forever. Uh, but it's time that we jump on board. Amen. Time is running short and it's time to get on board the ship of Zion. Amen. 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 Let's do this. The Old Ship of Zion. I hope you can hear me okay. She's a big old ship, and she's sitting mighty low in the water. She's been on a maiden voyage ever since the day the blood of Calvary bought her. She's weathered by the storms. Some passengers jumped overboard and drowned. She's not just some Titanic. She's the church. And she ain't going down. Say
for mercy tonight. Amen? I'm thankful for mercy. Stood in the courtroom the Judge turned my way Looks like you're guilty Now what do you say? I spoke up your honor. I have no defense, but that's when mercy Give up the mercy. 
Amen. I'm so thankful for night, tonight for mercy that walked into my life. I'm so thankful for that tonight. Uh, this weekend, as I mentioned before, we've been very busy getting stuff ready because we're hoping to be moving in the house pretty soon. We we see people there cleaning it up, so y'all be in prayer for that. But at this time, let's go ahead and take up some prayer requests since we are alive. And I want to go ahead and say let's be in prayer for the ones that uh, have been affected or, or will be affected by Tropical Storm Florence now. It's not a hurricane, considered a hurricane anymore. But let's pray for the, the lost people that's in this world, the lost and dying souls. Let's pray for our country. The leaders of this country, let's pray for True Life Ways Ministry. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, you can post them below. Wouldn't you don't have your phone with you, do you, to see if anybody's posting? She's going to look real quick. Well, uh, y'all just be in prayer for our ministry. Christopher Carson, y'all have any prayer requests? Whitney, you have a prayer request? No, no, okay. Well, you know, we know that the Lord has, knows There's our a needs. Lot of needs yeah there's tons of needs there's a lot of needs whether the needs are posted on, on on facebook or not whether we're told what they are the lord knows the needs we have he knows the needs he knows the situations he knows the circumstances that we are going through so we're going to go ahead and pray that anybody that's under the sound of my voice the ones that watch this video they'll watch it now later that they'll be touched by whatever situation it is that he will touch them yes Whitney. pray for joe and tally's family we'll be praying for your family Amen. Is that it for now? For now. And of course, you know, when you post scripture, whether, I mean, not scripture, when you post your prayer request, whether we're, we see it live or not, when we uh, get notific uh, notifications of the prayer request, we always pray then anyways. It just won't be here, as we say before in the past. So if you'll bow your heads, let's take these knees before the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this night you give us. God, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We ask that you be with Joanne's family, God, whatever this need, whatever the situation, circumstance, whatever it may be, may, whatever the storm may be, Lord, we know that in the storm, in the eye of the storm, you remain in control, Lord. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you, Lord. And we ask that you keep a hedge protection of the people that's going to be affected by the hurricane, by uh, Florence, Lord, whether it's going to hit us or not. Uh, Lord, we ask that you be with the prayer, I mean, touch the uh, lost people in this country, God. Touch our leaders of this country, Lord. Bless this nation, Lord. And we ask that anybody that's under the sound of my voice at this time, God, that you will bless them and nurture them and, and let them grow in you, Jesus. And we love you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And church, say amen. 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 If you want to follow along in your Bibles, we're getting ready to read the scripture for tonight. If you want to turn to John 8, John chapter 8, and we're going to start at verse 1 and reading through verse 11. And you will find that this is the account of the adult, the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. This is what we're going to be talking about tonight. You may be saying, Chris, you hadn't even, Brother Chris, you hadn't even told us what the sermon title is going to be. Well, that'll come. Don't worry about that. Yeah, we'll get there. I have a reason for my, there's a, I have a reason for why I do things. There's a reason for my insanity sometimes, I guess. But starting in chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Jesus went unto the, the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had her set in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded, commanded us that, we, that, that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger, wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So he's not even listening to them. He's acting like he don't even hear a word they're saying. Sometimes I wonder what he was writing on the ground with his finger. Verse 7, so when they continued asking him, you know, they just kept asking he lifted up himself, and he said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And, when they, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, 
Where are those that are, the, those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Tonight I want to talk to you. I want to preach a message to you called Mercy Walked In. Amen. Mercy Walked In. So how many of you ever found yourself in the need of mercy? How many of you ever been there? And when it seemed all hope was lost and in that moment, it was in that moment, mercy walked in. You know, we are all in need of mercy. And, and, and good thing for us, the God we serve, the very God we call on, is a God of mercy. Did you know that tonight? He is a God of mercy. What is mercy? Have you ever thought of the definition of mercy? I mean, I know we know what mercy means. We, know, we understand the concept of mercy. But I've actually never looked the definition up in the actual dictionary on what mercy means, how it's defined. And, this, and I liked what it said. Compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. That is the definition of mercy. And like, like I said, I know we understand what mercy means. But to read it like that, to, be, to see it put in that compassion, forgiveness shown towards someone, parentheses, me, and, in, and, and, and it, it is in his power, his power to punish, in parentheses, me, in parentheses, you, but he shows mercy, right? This is very powerful. This is a very powerful word to me, mercy. Because it shows compassion. It shows forgiveness on someone that doesn't deserve it. Amen? That's what it boils down to. To someone that doesn't deserve it. Right? Does that make sense? We use, we use it a lot saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Have you ever said that before? Like you see something crazy or something goes on, you're like, oh, Lord, have mercy. You ever done that before? But you know, that should be, really be our prayer. Lord, have mercy on me. Amen? Have mercy. Because we fall and we fail him daily. Yes, we need some mercy. Somebody say amen. We need some mercy. And I think most of the time that this story is preached, you know, it's always preached again around the judging others topic. Well, they use this story to say, you know, you don't judge people. Because I used the same story in a message called Casting Stones. You may remember it, you may not. But the Lord showed me a different message to preach from this story. And of course, you know, it is about mercy. Someone say mercy. Y'all ain't saying it like you mean it. Say mercy. Mercy. Oh, that's better. Not that great, but that's better. Here we find Jesus teaching in the temple. All right. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman that was caught in adultery. And verse 4 tells us explicitly, They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. The last part of that verse says, in the very act. This is the King James Version. They bring her forth and slam her at the feet of Jesus. That the, the, They made sure in this account, that they made sure that they we know as the readers know, in they she was caught in the very act act okay they tell him moses in the laws commanded that she should be stoned christopher you know what stoned means that means be put to death S simply put but what do you say that's what they said she should be stoned but what do you say jesus what do you think and they were trying to find something to accuse jesus with but he paid them no attention as he was writing on the ground with his finger, and I promise you, I wish I knew what he was writing on the ground. Because they, they, the, the writer made it uh, sure that that was an important fact to know. He was writing on the ground with his finger. We don't know what it was. But when I stand before him one day, I'm going to ask, what was you writing on the ground? You know, I want to know. What was you writing on the ground? I can understand you, you know, ignoring the hypocrites over here. But what was you writing on the ground? That's what I want to know. What was you writing? So they kept asking him. They kept asking him the same question. And he's finally, he stands up and says, You without sin cast the first stone. You that has no sin, if you have no sin, throw the first stone at her. You can stone her, but throw the, you have to have no sin in your life. And then the scripture says that they begin, they begin to be convicted within themselves and their conscience. 
that they started leaving one by one. Now this, this really spoke out to me in, in, in verse 9. And we're about to look at this verse again. But this really, this really stood out to me. And it says, and, and, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and a woman standing in the midst. You might wonder, what's the big deal in that verse? Where are you going with that? Well, let us break this verse down a little bit. And let's look at it closely. They were convicted by their own conscience and began leaving one by one, starting, starting with the eldest and even unto the last. Like you just said that, brother. That's why you keep repeating that. No one was left standing in there except for Jesus and the woman. Brother Chris, you about to repeat yourself again? What is the big deal? This verse tells us. I want you to pay attention. As this verse tells us that we are all. Somebody say all. all. We are all need of mercy. Even the elders needed mercy. The young needed mercy. The in-between need mercy. We all need mercy. Amen? We all need mercy. Fortunately, many years ago, there was a man named Jesus. He was beaten and nailed to a tree through his wrist and his feet. He bore a crown of thorns placed upon his head. Right? He hung on a cross among criminals. But he himself had done no wrong. He died and was placed in a tomb only to rise again on the third day. He is alive forevermore. And because of his sacrifice... We can have mercy. Amen? Mercy. We all need mercy. You see, the scribes and the Pharisees, they made a crucial mistake here. Yes, I say they made a crucial mistake. They wanted to find something to accuse Jesus with, and they wanted to, st to stone the woman, yet they threw this woman at the feet of mercy. <laughs> Do you see that? Do you see where, where, what, 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 what's, what, what just happened? I said mercy that time. Jesus is mercy. I want, I want to get you th this to you tonight. But the woman caught in the act of adultery. This scene is not too different from what we, how we live now. And what we have going on now, right? There's always someone trying to find fault, trying to accuse, lying on you, whatever it may be. And they bring you forth and they throw you this way and they throw you that way. You stand before the judge. You should be guilty, but mercy walked in. How many times should you have been sentenced to death? Theoretically speaking, in sin. If, it, if we was in a, 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 a church full of, of, of people, I'm sure there'd be hands going up everywhere. You know you sinned and you know you were wrong. How many times should you have been uh, charged as guilty and sentenced to death? How many times? But you didn't have to because mercy walked in. Because we serve a God that is merciful and loving. Amen? I've been like the woman caught in the act of adultery. I should have been put to death. I should have had been found guilty. But Jesus slash mercy walked in. Had it not been for the grace of God, where would I be today? Have you ever thought about that? If it hadn't been for the grace of God, for his mercy, where would you be today? Dead. Carson says we should be dead. No, not being alive. Well, that's, that's not being alive is being dead. <laughs> where would you be without mercy where would you be think about it we should all be guilty every single one of us we should be we should be guilty we all sin Carson we all sin I'm about to do a lesson on that I guess Carson doesn't sin <laughs> but because of mercy all right because of mercy we can still go free we can still go free we can walk away and not have to worry about it. Amen? Amen? We can be free. We can walk away free. How many of you are thankful for mercy tonight? Are you thankful for grace today? Isn't God amazing? Isn't He amazing? Carson. Verse 10, Jesus looked around and, and He seen it was just Him and the woman. And He asked, where are your accusers? Have no man condemned you? 
She said, no, no one has. Jesus says, well, I don't condemn you either. But go and sin no more. Mercy had walked in. She was guilty as sin, according to the law, to be put to death. But God, but God, amen? But God, mercy walked into her life. She was thrown at the feet of mercy that day. Now, everything I've preached, every time I've preached something about this story, I always point this one little thing out that Jesus says that people don't understand. They don't pay attention to it. People say that Jesus didn't judge the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. A show of hands in here. How many of y'all believe that Jesus did not judge the woman that was caught in the act of adultery? Honestly. No hands went up here. They pay attention. The woman, the truth of the matter is he did judge the woman. And I'm not going to get into it and make this a whole sermon about judging. But in verse 11 he says, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He made a judgment that she had indeed, indeed sinned, okay? He did see that she had sinned. He knew she had sinned. But he didn't condemn her for it. He showed her mercy. He had compassion. He forgave, amen? He didn't condemn her. Yes, he judged, but he didn't condemn her for it. Yeah, does that make sense tonight? Mm -hmm. He showed mercy. He told you, he told her, I don't, I don't condemn you either, but go and sin no more. But you know, that's something I always have to point out because people say, well, even Jesus, he didn't, he didn't judge the woman that was caught in adultery. To make that, a st that a, a statement, go and sin no more, he made a judgment that she had sinned. Just to throw that out there. But see, this woman was in need of mercy. And she was thrown at the feet of mercy. We need mercy. So we should throw ourselves to the feet of Jesus. Amen? Slash mercy. We should, have to, we should ask Him to forgive us. Because you know, you sin daily. We all sin daily, whether we realize it or not. And we should ask Him to forgive us and to come down to us. Amen? We have to ask Him to come down to us. Because we're not worthy enough to go to Him. Amen? Know that I'm not worthy to call upon your name. All my life I've been a sinner that I am ashamed. But I heard that you listen, so I'm giving you my plea. Too unworthy, Lord, come to you. Would you please come down to me? You want to find yourself a place to pray? Lord, there are others who can offer more than I. I promise you I'd understand if for me you had no time. They got just the bottom, and I'm looking up to see. Too unworthy, Lord, come to you. Would you please come down to me? See, it doesn't matter to me if the haters want to throw me at the feet of Jesus, but they just gave me to mercy. Amen. Yes, I must be reaping from the seed that I have sown. Lord, you owe me nothing for having spoken for so long. But if you can spare some mercy, Lord, I pledge my life to thee. Too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Would you please come down to me? I know that there are others who could offer more than I. I 
promise you I'd understand If for me you had no time I think I just hit bottom And I'm looking up to see Do what were they more come to you And I'm looking up to see I'm too unworthy, Lord, come to you Would you please come down to me? Come down to me Amen just want to remind you that we are all in need of mercy. We all need his grace and his forgiveness. It's, it's all on him. Amen. We have to rely on him. I'm going to sing one more song because I just feel like I need to sing this song tonight. But with what we're going through, okay, and then after this song, I'll dismiss. We'll pray and we'll dismiss. But no matter what you face, no matter what you go through, I want you to know that if you hold on to Jesus, somebody say, hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Amen. Hold on to that anchor. Because that anchor in your life will hold if you hold on to Him. Amen. The anchor holds. The anchor holds tonight. I'm telling you, the anchor holds. If you focus and trust in Jesus completely, I don't care how big the storm is. I don't care how bad the circumstance is. I don't care what the situation is. The anchor holds. Amen? The anchor holds tonight. We just have to hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Amen? Amen. The anchor holds. The anchor holds in your life. I have journeyed through the long dark night out on the open sea. That picture right there. My faith alone, sight unknown, and yet his eyes were watching me. The anchor holds, though the sheep.
As I said, no matter what you face, no matter what you're going through, whether that's named Florence, Harvey, Irma, Matthew, whatever it may be, the Lord is in control. Amen. The anchor holds. And because of him, we have mercy tonight. Amen. We love you guys. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We, uh, let's dismiss in prayer. And one final time, no prayer requests. All right. Nothing specifically. Nothing specifically. All unspecial and spoken prayer requests. Lord, we thank you for this night you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Lord, I ask that anybody that's under the sound of my voice, God, whatever the need, situation, whatever it may be, God, we ask that you touch it according to your will and your purpose, Lord. We ask that you bless our ministry. Let it grow and nurture in a way that you see fit. And we love you, and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise tonight. And Jesus' name we pray in the church. Say amen. 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 But I hope you got something out of this message. Don't forget, mercy. Jesus is love. He is mercy. He is merciful. Amen. He loves. He has compassion. But God bless you, and we will see you Thursday night. Love you guys.